So this uh, human experience is an opportunity sort of a sort of a passage from the realm of the relative to the the absolute In the relative realm, we experience all sorts of things, events, birth, death. Various feelings, emotions. which uh, come and go. In everything we experience, we, we seek yeah. that which doesn't come and go. We cannot be fully content, fully satisfied with uh, that which is relative. We cannot be satisfied with that which, to which we can hold on. because it's not possible to hold on forever. We can notice how the mind, how thoughts and Always pointing outward, outwardly. A better world, a better health, a better body, a better relationship. Always pointing out, outwardly. a better social order, a world that is more just,
because we want to experience the, the peace and the love and the beauty and the freedom in the world. We, we do want to experience it and live it. We should be able to. Why not? But somehow something something seems to be in the way. in the way of a life of peace and tranquility that is a void of fear and worry, anxiety, somehow something is in the way, what, what's in the way? When we take a look, we find that somehow we are very often, if not most often, experiencing a sense of me, a separate me. my body, my life, my family, my dad, my mom, my son, my bank account, my the sense of me that somehow is always there whenever there is trouble. But before the initial thought and feeling of me arises, here I am. Here I am as this presence that has no name, no history. No age, no past, no future. Full and, and complete and whole onto itself. Always there. Here I am. Can we notice this, this beingness, this presence? Which is a, a silent stillness. Causeless, silent stillness of being. The body mind is a, a passing impression. One day, a twelve year old boy, next day, forty year old man in a glimpse, in a glimpse, the parents are here. Another glimpse, they're gone. Where did they come from? Where did they go?
where does this breath arise from and where does it go? Can we be completely not knowing? This screen of awareness that is sufficient unto itself and is also there whenever there is a need to act, to respond. It's right there, that same screen of awareness. Notice the peace, the stillness, the inner tranquility, which is not the result of any great activity or a wonderful experience. Rather, it is there causelessly, effortlessly. Can we? Recognize that aspect of our being. Which is unborn, unmanifest. The silent stillness. Can we meet every aspect of our experience. With that inner silent stillness. Outwardly, we may act, we may respond. But inwardly, It's a different matter. And they're not two. The inward piece of being and our activity in the world. Like the water, the water in the various shapes of it, the ocean and the waves, and not two. So you, you welcome yourself, not just as the stream of thoughts and images and but as the peace of being. You don't need to. delete any part of your life in order to be that which you are. You are this aware presence.
Yes, there is a body mind that appears to you, a female, a male form appears to you, sensations, perceptions, all sorts of mind impressions. But is it possible to be guided by the deeper understanding about our true nature? Rather than to be guided by the stream of thoughts and impressions and feelings. To invite ourselves to live from this transparency of being, this effortless aware presence, to invite ourselves to live with the recognition of our sameness as awareness. The mind keeps pulling us to the, to the right, to the left, in all sorts of directions. looking for peace and happiness in experiences. We are so busy with the, our thoughts and feelings. Year after year, decade after decade, the same rerun the same replay maybe i will be happy if and when if and when what so we wonder what is peace and happiness right now in this moment It is possible for us to understand that with the feeling of separation and the belief in being a person comes hand in hand a sense of isolation, loneliness, detachment, seeking. We can comprehend that. And yet we continue to refer to I as a body-mind, as a person. Can we, can we comprehend that I refers to this transparent aware presence? to sort of really get it, really get it. That this aware presence has no borders, no owner. It's neither female or male. That there is only one I, one reality. Yes, there are many different trees in the forest, oak trees, maple trees, pine trees, fig trees. 
you know, many forms, many thoughts, many sensations, many shapes of bodies and faces and images. And, but there is one eye, one, one consciousness, one awareness. That's our direct experience, isn't it? Take a look. Not to sort of say, oh yeah, I get it, and just sort of go back to the next feeling, the next thought, the next story. But to just really, really get it. Yes, always this one eye, this always one eye. This eye, this reality that perceives right now, that hears these words, has no name. It doesn't make a sound, it's not has no color. It's a, awareness is undeniable, isn't it? What else would, would I refer to if not this transparent awareness. Take a look and get it, don't skip over this. So we can cease referring to ourselves as a man or a woman. So we can, yes, refer to the body as a male body, female body, but cease to refer to I, I as the body. To cease to limit consciousness, impose upon consciousness our stubborn belief that Yes, consciousness is a, this male body or this female body. So we can come to the deep comprehension that, of that which is unborn, which is beyond birth and death. Because this is where our true home is. Okay, so we 
If you have any questions, please make sure to unmute your mic at the time. Any questions? Hi, Magdi. Hello, Mina. I have no question, but I thank you very, very much for these beautiful words. And I wanted to share that um, I was very sick the last week and this week, and, mm. and life had have put me in a situation where I had to be quiet I couldn't speak anymore so much. I was in my bed. Uh -huh. And this, this led me to, to this inner peace and to this um, going out of this outer world in this inner world. And, and there happens now very slowly this shift where I can, I can, very very good understand all all your words and i see this inner presence that has no color that has no shape but it is always here and i see the the change between this outer looking for something going for something and now i feel that this presence is everywhere Wherever I am, I am with all that I need. Yes. <laughs> yes, beautiful. You know. And I feel so happy and so thankful. Wonderful. And I think, I don't know, it's, it seems like a birth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's very lovely, Mina. Um, thank you for sharing that. I also wish you a quick recovery. And, uh, um, good health to you thank you yeah thank you for your sharing it's it's very beautiful yeah thank you very much you know on another note sometimes in our daily life it's uh, helpful to take some time to sort of press the pause button you know, to uh, just be, experience ourself as being, sensing, perceiving, sort of be inactive externally but internally, there's a great loving attention. And uh, with that comes the, so the sense of awe, like a, a discovery of that everything that we perceive there is a magical quality to it, which sort of brings the mind to, to silence, to stillness. And sensations within the body, so rich, 
so, so much to explore right there. To, to be present without conditions to be present in a sort of a unconditional, open, loving way to it, whatever is unfolding. No doing, there's no doing in that. It's, uh, more of a more of a being rather than doing. Yes, and what what is really amazing is that this inner voice that is the only real part of us is so silent. And this outer world that is this Maya part of the whole is so very loud. <laughs> and we are very much in this loudness always. Yes. And there is no gap where we can hear this silent voice. So now this experience was that I was forced to, to remain silent and to, to let out this loud world outside. Yes. And, and so suddenly this subtle voice could speak and could share its presence. Yes, it could be heard. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes, um, you know. Uh, also, we have the experience at times of the peace, the inner light, in the presence of an activity like this conversation, see? And sometimes we also get a sense of that light of being in the presence of a feeling. And it's really beautiful because when we perceive simultaneously the peace of being in the presence of the feeling, the feeling then takes on the form of just an image on the screen, like a, an impression, an impression. It'd be happening in the body, a sensation within the body. And we sometimes notice that the sensation in the body, when it's being looked at, when, it's being, when it is perceived in an impersonal way, it does not disturb yes. the peace. Even sometimes a pain, a pain in the body, we may have a pain in the leg or whatever, a pain in the body, which we sometimes experience from a place of resistance and worry and thinking and you know all that concern but there are times when we can we experience the pain from a place that is not spinning it it's not like worrying or making a story about it What's going to happen to me? And then we realize the experience and the impersonal aspect of this, what we call pain, of this appearance. In a way, pain is an appearance. 
And then we have the opportunity to realize that that there is there is such a thing as perceiving pain, perceiving an experience such as pain impersonally. And that in that case, in, in such a case, there is nothing being disturbed, nothing being defended, nothing being uh, gra uh, grasped or uh, held on to, nothing that is being hoped for. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And it's a it's a, uh, um, a beautiful uh, understanding that that it is possible to experience the world, the body, the mind as that impersonal awareness, not just when the world is quiet or the body is quiet or the mind is quiet, not only in meditation room or, but across uh, all experiences. Yes. Because eventually, you know, we, we don't want to separate our life in any way. You know, living our life, of course, in life there are all sorts of activities, all sorts of events. And we want to relive life. And uh, so in the, our understanding, as we're living more and more our understanding and available more and more to be understanding about the peace, the causeless peace of being, then the world is also incorporated in that peace. Not uh, the world like I want it to be or how it should be or shouldn't be. No, but just whatever is appearing, whichever is appearing. Which includes yeah. also, at times it includes us interacting, you know, in the world and say, oh no, not like this, it's better like that. But from a place yes. that is not disturbed. Yes. And also I I see that I, that more and more there is no more connection to the past. Mm. Because I, I realize that all that is is now and it pops up now and yeah. when i collect this or this or this to something to the past then this surrender uh, this uh, suffering comes but when i'm only here and now in the, yes. in this moment then it is all here yes 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 this is this whole story uh, I am this and this, I have this and this, and this one hurt me and this one didn't gave me. Yes. And this is all no existent anymore. Right. <laughs> and it's it's and it's unhappy. Yes. Yes. Well, it's very beautiful. We can consider the past as like a a vast ocean of Love. Yes. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> all, all the nows. <laughs> all the nows. <laughs> In <Yeah>. love. <laughs> yes. <laughs> In a way, you know, when we look up at the night sky and we perceive the all the stars and the galaxies in in the night sky, it's so beautiful. It's so yes. beautiful. 
But yet what we are perceiving is the past. Yes. Because <laughs> the supernova that occurred 20,000 light years away, the light is traveling 20 light years for 20 light years, and now we see it. Yes. <laughs> we and it maybe doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> we're seeing the past, and, yes. and it's so beautiful. So yes. if we can uh, just consider the past a vast ocean of love and beauty. Yeah. The main, the main issue we have in our life is to separate ourselves from anything. From yes. We separate ourselves from each other, we separate ourselves from our body, we separate ourselves from our mind, we separate ourselves from the table. It is the separating, separating yourself. That is really the main. Yes. Um, and you are right in our experience of now, of presence. There isn't, there is no room, no space for us to separate ourselves, because yes. the now is just, is has no time for in it for you to go out of your way and separate yourself from anything. Yes, <laughs> you're you're completely. absorbed or in yes. intimate with you are the intimacy you are the intimacy yes so in the intimacy you can separate anything so yes the, the beautiful what you said about the past because that's how we bring in unnecessary suffering Yes, and this is the only suffering I see. Yes. All, with all that. And, and in the same time, all these nows from the past has brought me here to realize all this. Absolutely. Uh, like, yes. Yeah. yeah, so there is a, a sort of a gratitude, isn't there, for, for everything. Yeah. Everyone. Even people who so, supposedly hurt us. <laughs> yes. I mean, that's a narrative, of course, but here we are, you know, this. Yes. So the gratitude is always now, always now. When we recognize, wow, you know, how wonderful it is to be. The yes. wonder of being. When we realize the wonder of being, then there's a gratitude for everything because everything is brings this beingness right now. It's the result of yeah. everything, billions of years of evolution, whatever, the whole sort of gratitude, you know. The... Yes, very much. But the, the mind, when it falls into the silence, It's the peace. Uh, then it's 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 open. It's like it's open. It's available. Like like the sky is available for the clouds, for the rain, for the for anything. It's available that way. Mind is available that way. It's a, that's love because yes. there's no conditions. Yes, and all can be like it is. And of course, there is also the intelligence, and there's intelligence that sometimes you perceive something and uh, you realize well okay that's something i need to go in the other direction so you go in the other direction there are some people that you meet sometimes that 
they uh, not necessarily open right now, you know, in their relationship, in whatever way, you know, there there may not be a, a possibility to have a harmonious relationship with some people in your life, even some close close members of in your life, you know, maybe. So there is an intelligence, okay, well, maybe this is not the time, you know. Some mm -hmm. take a long time to ripen, you know, some, uh, some plants, they just bloom, bloom and bloom and bloom. Others, they just like there, and very slowly, very slowly, very slowly, very slowly, you know. Mm -hmm. At uh, some at some time, he, you know, it's so slowly. Then it blows. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, <laughs> interesting. <It's... laughs> it's all okay. It's all okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay, Mimi. Quick recovery in the thank you for recovery for you soon. Thank you very much, Frank. Okay. Any questions? Hello, Marga. Hi. Hi, Marga. How are you? Yes, lovely to see you, Marga. Thank you. Yes. Um, it's so peaceful after listening to you and Mina talk. It, just, it felt so peaceful. And I could relate to the way she was talking about somehow the way illness gives us this spaciousness mm -hmm. and acceptance because you have to march through. <laughs> you know, and just be with it. And um, I just wanted to ask, um, this relates a little bit to that and a little bit to what you talked to Amna last week about livelihood. And um, in my job this week, it's, it's kind of like just one week that's very bureaucratic. And every week I always, that week every year, you know, I, I just try to roll with it. I don't try it, but it's, it's energetically difficult. And I don't know how to say it, except that I'm not perceiving myself as separate and resistant, but I feel like I pay a price in the body. So that after a couple days of that, um, by the end of one day, I just felt like a weight on me, almost like Mm -hmm. I've never been under one, but I've heard of those weighted blankets that people get under. <laughs> mm -hmm. My body felt like that. And I, there was nothing that was, you know, like no thoughts, of course, could make it ease. But I thought nature. So I ran to the beach and went for like a two hour walk. And it was blustery, which was good. So that kind of hit my body and loosened things up. Mm -hmm. And I felt fine the rest of the evening but I was curious about I think there must be some separation going on for me to have such an energetic bodily response um mm -hmm. I'm just curious about the way no not necessarily no um there are different uh characteristics to different, you know, body minds. And some some families you know, there are children, and uh, you notice, you know, some children they like to just stay in their room and play in their room and arrange their room, and uh, others from a very young age they they're storyteller. They try to they like to interact and be creative. And, some have a strong like leadership they like to organize there are various uh, characteristics to the body mind which don't have anything to do with um, uh, ignorance or the sense of separation or the, the false sense of self of course uh, 
uh, I'm talking about uh, the characteristics of the body mind and not necessarily about uh, uh, having an image of yourself. You know, an image of yourself is a different thing. So, but what you seem to be describing to me is something that I can relate to quite a bit in that, um, you know, being in a bureaucratic, you know, environment, an administrative environment where you, there are hours of sitting, listening to reports or going through presentations. And uh, it may not be what really resonates for you, what really excites you, what you love doing. But from my understanding, it's some, something that somehow you have to go through it in that job for now for a week or so. Uh, but what you did was great. It's like you, I was, I was going to recommend, you know, some sort of activity. <laughs> and then you spoke about uh, even a better one going in nature and, and, uh, uh, but I was going to recommend to, you know, if it's a day like that throughout the day to break up, take some time during the day to, if possible, you know, do a brisk walk or do some, you know, if, if it's possible to do a few minutes of yoga or stretching or something else besides, you know, uh, uh, and also moving the body. Uh, I remember, uh, you know, years ago in, when I was in the Zen tradition and there was be a lot of sitting, uh, of course, people were sitting because that's what they wanted to do. They loved doing it. Still every 45 minutes, I believe it was, we had, we would get up and there would be five minutes of, uh, of walking. And also every four periods, there would be a break for people to do something else. And then there was a, a period of work period and an exercise period. So, yes, it, it makes sense. Uh, now in general, overall, as a generalization, the human body likes activity. It doesn't like sort of to be uh, in a, in, a, in a situation where you sort of, it's like, it's like being in traffic. Okay, I mean, but we can be in traffic, but like after 30 minutes in traffic, you know, you're sitting in that box, you know, and uh, yeah, the body mind is saying, okay, you know, you know, I wanna, I wanna move, I wanna experience, you know, life. <laughs> That's what we, we uh, awful thing we do to people, we put them in these jails, you know, it's a, we sort of figure a way to hurt them, put them in, in, in a box, deprive them from, from a natural way of being. Even there are isolation places where they torture people with these things. It's really crazy, really mad. No, I think you're, you're, uh, you don't need to uh, worry yourself about, about that. It's normal to feel like, I, I have great difficulty in traveling in, in airplanes, you know, long, long, long flights. I, uh, so, Yes, being sitting for, you know, so many hours in the plane, I have difficulty with that. <laughs> Tara is always sort of making sure that I, somehow she helps me making, make it through those hours of being still in the plane. Uh, So it's kind of like um, just a body mind tendencies. Yeah, of normal one, completely, yeah, absolutely, absolutely, uh, absolutely. Like, like dogs, you know, it's not a good thing to have pets and not to uh, have space for them to run and to, I don't know, play in the water to 
uh, we, we understand that about, about, about dogs, especially because we love our dogs. So we have all these dog playgrounds, you know, playgrounds for dogs to go play. Um, Yeah, no, it's a, but not to make an image of yourself is the key thing, to be image free, you know, like to be transparent to the body, how the body is expressing itself, the mind, you know, this getting bored of, you know, this, okay, you know, so <laughs> after a while you say, excuse me, I have to go to the bathroom and you go for a little walk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I think this is all uh, normal, you know. Wait. Wait. Remember, like, I used to, for a while, live outside of Washington, D.C., and I would be driving on this you know, highway that comes into the city, and and there is an overpass and, and you could see these buildings. Sometimes there are buildings like right next to the, to the highway and they're tall buildings and the glass uh, windows. And I would, be, I would look over and I see all these cubicles, you know, there would be like all these cubicles and people sitting in these cubicles. And I always, my heart went, went out <laughs> for them. It's like, oh my God, <laughs> yeah. Day after day, week after week, month after month, sitting in the, this cubicle, you know, for hours. And then one day that I was uh, driving on the highway, I had the radio on, and there were there was an interview with this uh, woman who she was. Uh, from another country, I don't know what country anymore, maybe it was an Asian country maybe, or African country, I don't remember, but uh, and she was talking about how she wanted to come to America and there was like an interview about, and one of the things she said really struck me. She said, oh, I, I love to come to America because I want to work in one of these offices. <laughs> and uh, uh, the image that flashed in my mind is those cubicles. <laughs> and there is a, here is this person who just really can't wait to, to, to do that. So some people's, but some people's uh, uh, cross is other people's uh, I don't know what the expression, but some some people perceive things in different ways. So what do I know? Maybe people are happy doing that somehow. I had a brother who loved to uh, work in a corporate. Actually, he was sort of a corporate person, you know. And, I, and I'm like, so much not that. And I, I couldn't comprehend how could... Well, how could you be my brother and be a corporate person? <laughs> but uh, how could anybody be a corporate person? But yet, look, I mean, there are millions of people who are corporate people somehow. Uh, each body mind is different. I mean, you, you know, uh, and things change, you know. Sometimes you are. Uh, you're enjoying sort of a certain type of work and then at some point you, you just, something changes and you know, you don't want that anymore. Anyways, I'm just yapping. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay. <laughs> bye. Okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, but the, the key thing is not to define ourselves, to remain um, as we are, you know, this, this beingness, not, not being somebody or being someone, this, this being, being.
Any questions? Okay, well, if there are no more questions, you know, uh, Frank is coming into the picture. So uh, thank you all. Very lovely to be with you. And George, see you, George, and Marga, Mina. Thank you, Mahdi. And Mina, and Grace. Hi, Grace. Thank Lisa. you, Mahdi. Grace, yes. Hello, Lisa. Good to see you, Lauren. Hello, Lauren. And Esther, hi Esther, and Holger, hello Holger, and two drivers, uh, Richard and Frank. <laughs> Magdi, I'm on Route 66 right now. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I think I was, uh, I was on 395, but yeah, 66 is a good one too. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> I'm on 128, Route 128. Just. <laughs> <laughs> where, where is that, uh, Frank? Where? It's in Boston. It's, it circles Boston. Oh, okay. It's, like, okay. it's, 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 a, it's, it's a ring road. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, there are so many 128s. Okay. <laughs> I'm not localized, but you know, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> okay, lovely to see oh, you. Oh, you're in your bed, okay. <laughs> All right. Have fun. <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye. Bye, all. Thank you all. Thank you all. <laughs>